Chelsea against Nottingham Forest in the third round of the FA Cup. As the Blues are again out to start a run of wins and possibly use a lower league opposition to point their home form in a better direction. And especially Callum Hudson-Odoi has to use this game to get his form and confidence back on track where there might be chances for other players with little game time so far this season. Hello there guys and welcome back to Blues Fans TV for my FA Cup preview with Chelsea taking on Forest, Nottingham Forest on Sunday afternoon with the kickoff being a 2 one One minute um, past two by the way due to the FA's heads up campaign promoting mental well-being um, amongst fans which of course is something that I think all of us can get behind and I think you know it's not a bad thing doesn't make you know it doesn't harm anyone to delay the kickoff by one minute and you know everyone will notice that one minute so maybe it will do a little something good i guess but now just getting into the game of course it is going to be taking place at Stamford bridge before getting into the preview itself um be sure to subscribe to blues fans tv if you haven't already make sure you hit the notification bell button to absolutely be sure you don't miss any for future videos because sometimes videos just don't show up in sub boxes so just subscribing might not be enough if you actually want to see our content but now getting into it and as always of course starting it off by speaking on our opposition that of course is Nottingham Forest and Forest currently sit in fourth in the championship but nine points off Leeds and West Brom who are joined top and generally it's just a very close league um, you know just from third downwards but Forest have 43 points from 25 games played so far with 12 wins seven draws and six defeats alongside a goal difference of plus nine scoring 34 and conceding 25 which is actually a Pretty good defensive record in the league, but just average on the scoring front compared to the teams around them. Their recent form, as you can see on screen, hasn't, you know, has actually been very good, sorry, with three wins on the bounce. But before that, it has actually been quite bad around the Christmas period, or I guess just before Christmas and in December, it's actually been quite bad. And then the last time they played a top team was actually this season, and that really, really didn't go well for them at all, as they lost 5-0 at the Emirates in the League Cup back in September, when Arsenal fielded as much of a B team as they could find, really, so... You know, I guess that could, you know, fill, you know, fill us with more confidence. But at the same time, you never know. Forest might turn up a completely different side, to, you know, on Sunday. And um, that, of course, will change everything. Um, by far the biggest danger man is striker Lewis Graben, who's um, on 14 goals so far this season, 14 goals and one assist, with the next highest goal scorer, winger Joe Lolly, only having scored four. So, you know, Graben by far out, you know, is the most, you know, the biggest danger man, I guess, although the highest performer has actually been their right back by, you know, rating. But, you know, 14 goals is really not, really nothing to, you know, shy away from. He is most certainly a danger man. Formation rise and um, tactics. Forrest literally always go with a 4-2-3-1, including at Arsenal, but except in that game, seemingly always get good results when they have less of the ball than their opponent, but very often lose when they have more of it which is a little bit strange in my opinion and does suggest that one of their main strengths um, you know, is the counter-attack you know, and we definitely should be wary of that but they've also scored 9 goals from set pieces in the championship already this season which in itself worries me immediately that we're going to somehow throw this away but um, you know, let's be honest, we should be fine other than that though, um, I don't see much point in going into even more detail about Nottingham Forest so I'm going to leave it there and now we move on to Mr Jody Morris press conference, pretty much press conference ahead of the FA Cup tie of course against Forest and um why did Jody Morris hold the press conference, I hear you ask? Well, Jody Morris cleared that up, you know, immediately as the first thing that he was asked about in the press conference. Frank Lampard simply scored a bit of a bug, um, you know, has been feeling it for a week or 10 days, Jody Morris said, but he should be absolutely fine to be on the bench on Sunday. Um, so nothing to worry about, but that was the reason why Jody Morris held the press conference today. Then he gave us team news, which of course is always very interesting, in my opinion, always the most interesting um, piece of news from the press conference. And firstly, Morris said that Alonso and Ruben Loftus-Cheek are going to miss the game, but... Um, you know, kind of for sure. And Alonso said he's kind of definitely sure. And of course, Ruben is still out. But Morris did say that there's also a couple of others that still need to be assessed. And, you know, we still kind of need to check um, the kind of, you know, little problems that we might have picked up at, at Brighton, whether they will be fine for Sunday or not. Um, he also did state that Tomori did train today. Of course, missed the Brighton game with illness. Um, but Morris also said that, you know, okay, he did train, but he still isn't feeling very, very well yet either. So we'll have to wait and see whether he'll be fine for Sunday or not. But Olivier Giroud um, is, you know, completely fine now. Um, he also stated, Jordi Morris, that is, that he is sure that there is going to be work in the club in terms of, you know, the transfer market, the transfer window, but he's not as free to talk about it as, of course, the manager is. He did say, though, that anyone coming in would, of course, you know, come in to improve the team. Though, I mean, I bloody hope so. At the same time, we've signed... Danny Drinkwater before, who, by the way, is coming back from Burnley. Burnley has confirmed that. Sean Dyche has confirmed that. He was on a six-month loan to Burnley. Barely played. Don't know how many times he played, but barely played. And um, he's now back at Chelsea, so now we have to try to get rid of him again. Jody Morris also mentioned Billy Gilmer and Mark Way for, you know, doing really well in training, you know, for the whole season, but also recently. 
but I also did say that Billy Gilmer actually missed training today as well with a bug, so let's hope that, you know, little bug or, you know, flu or whatever it is doesn't go around even more in the squad. It's already quite a few people. Um, but yeah, you know, whether he'll be available then on Sunday or not, I don't know at the moment. I guess it's just uncertain at the moment whether he will then start or not or whether just be on the bench or not be involved at all if he is fully fine. We don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But other than that, in all honesty, the press conference wasn't that interesting. Of course, he was asked about the academy, him being Jody Morris. He was also asked about, you know, when he kind of laughed at with Jose Mourinho's comments um, saying he's a bit worried about us, you know, playing against big teams. Morris explained that it wasn't that interesting, you know, if you want, just look it up. It really, really wasn't that interesting. But I'm going to leave it there for the press conference and now moving into Chelsea. And as always, in these cup games, against lower league oppositions especially, it's very, very difficult to predict the starting eleven because it's just so tough to predict how much rotation the manager will do, how much rotation Frank Lampard will do. Um, you know, you could argue, play so many youngsters, but then... Forest in the Championship, it's not like they're a League 2 side. And they're also fourth in the Championship. That's not far off the Premier League level at all. Of course, the season is long and, you know, by the end of the season, they might be 10th. Um, that's how the Championship goes. But still, it's not something to underestimate. So I don't think it will be huge, but I am pretty sure that there will be quite a bit of rotation by Lampard, mainly to give some players, you know, a, just a much needed rest. You know, in goal, in my opinion, you have to expect Willy Caballero to start. He starts in the League Cup, so, you know, he needs some game time at times. So give Willy Caballero that starting goal. The two centre-backs... Well, I'm sure that Andreas Christensen will be one of them. You know, you really, really need some game time if you want to keep him until the end of the season, at least. Um, the question is just who will be the other one, the other centre-back next to him? Mark Way, quite possibly. Um, you know, he's played in, I think, both um, League Cup games so far. It might only have been against Grimsby. I'm not 100% sure anymore. Um, but he's featured in that. Did okay, I guess. But if it's not Mark Way, if Lampard doesn't want to rotate that much, I guess. Um, I guess it's probably Tomori if he's fine from his illness, seeing as Kurt Zuma and... Um, as when you really got started pretty much all of the games recently if Tomori isn't fine and Lampard doesn't want to go for Gway then I'm not really sure then I would just personally pick Gway I mean but what Lampard then does I don't really know coming to the fullbacks now Reese James you know if his ankle is fine of course he had a bit of an ankle problem before the Brighton game but did start in that and was one of our best players if not our best player alongside Kepa um he probably has to be at right back again just to give Aspi that rest and also his hamstring that rest that he's been you know kind of struggling with for a couple of weeks and otherwise, I guess we could just be seeing Tariq Lamptey, who of course got his debut against Arsenal and did really well in that. Maybe we could see him get his first start if Rhys James' ankle isn't fine. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but probably Rhys James is the more likely if he's fine, like I said, about three times now. And on the other side, on the left, I guess it just has to be Emerson, you know, especially with him kind of being out of favour with the manager for bigger games, it seems now, after the Arsenal game and being taken off after after, after half an hour and not being involved against Brighton. Um, and also, of course, with Alonso being injured, I guess Emerson, you know, is kind of just the only option. Then coming to midfield, now you have to assume that N'Golo Kante will finally get a rest. I would have given him a rest against Brighton. Would that have changed the result? I don't know. I think it might have done. Um, but, you know, he just needs a rest at some point. You know, we played him too much last season kind of thing or the, over the you know seasons before then with of course being with France and the World Cup and everything as well and then he was injured basically until October late like early November lot you know this season so you know don't overplay him again please don't overplay him again give him a rest and I personally think that Jorginho and Kovacic will probably both stay in the side because both of them you know had Jorginho wasn't always picked Kovacic was then suspended and then not picked and then you know taken off and you know it, they didn't play that much so I think they'll, they'll just stay in the team unless Billy Gilmer you know even if he's even well enough, you know, gets to play, uh, gets to start. I doubt that though. So I just think it's going to be Jorginho and Kovacic in the double pivot in a 4-2-3-1. And then at the number 10, surely Ross Barkley will start, you know, for the first time since that Newcastle game in which he got injured a few months ago and hasn't featured since then that, that I can remember. Definitely hasn't started since then. So surely it has to be him. Give a cup, give a bit of a rest to Mason Mount um, as well. Um, I, I think that will be okay. And um, I guess we'll, have, we'll we'll just see what Ross Barkley does if he does play again. They're coming to the wingers. Now, I am 100% certain that Kalamad Sodai will start. And I really, really hope that he can use use this game to just refine some of the confidence he has clearly been missing of late and also some of the form he has been missing of late. It, it's such a weird one with him. Like, he came back from that awful, you know, um, ruptured Achilles injury. And he came back and he was really, really good, impactful as a sub, you know, good when he started a couple of games, had loads of assists. I think he only scored against Grimsby, didn't score in the other games, but still was really, really important and good. Then picked up that hamstring injury that kept him out of the Man City game when we lost away to City. And since then, just hasn't been the same when he came back. Like, he just hasn't been on it, not, not full of confidence, not taking people on as much as he should taking the wrong decisions, just looking a bit slow a lot of the time, and it's just strange. And I hope that a game like this against a lower league opposition, you know, can just, you know, he can, can just have a really good performance. 
maybe get a goal or two and I could then possibly bounce it back into the right direction and him being you know more of an asset for us for the season moving onwards and then on the other side well I guess it just really depends on whether Lampard wants to use Pedro or not I mean Pulisic hasn't played that much in the last two games and also with us having a full week off after the Forest game before the next Premier League game I'm sure he'd be fine to play again to start again and then maybe bring Pedro on during the game now, personally, I don't really want to see Pedro, if I'm honest. So I'd go for Pulisic and hudson Odoi, but I'd accept Pedro as well myself. And then up front, as for the striker, even though Jordan Murray said that Giroud is now fine and, um, you know, kind of back fine, as if he came back from an injury or an illness that I seemingly didn't know about, didn't know that he was injured. I mean, there was a while back that he had a flu, and then there was a little bit of a problem, but then I thought he was fine again, but apparently he wasn't fine again. I'm not 100% sure. I still reckon, even though that is the case, I still reckon that Bacuay gets the start, and in my opinion, he should as well. That was it from the lineup, and you know, going into the game, obviously we're the favourites. Obviously, we have to win. It's a lower league opposition in the FA Cup, we're at Stamford Bridge as well. But we also have this problem with our home form. Jordi Morris did speak about it in a press conference, even if it wasn't that interesting. It is a problem. Our home form hasn't been good, and also generally our form against kind of lesser teams hasn't been that good lately. You know, we beat Spurs, we beat Arsenal, but then we lose to Southampton, we lose to Bournemouth, we lose to Everton, we lose to West Ham, when all of them, none of them were doing very well at all and um now of course we get that late you know draw against brighton and concede the equalizer which of course is annoying so we kind of struggling even though not all of those games were of course at home a home form generally hasn't been good we haven't been scoring enough we haven't had enough intensity um so let's hope we can turn that around you know let's really really hope we can turn it around and um you know, let's just hope that it won't be a problem. And like I said, I really just hope that Hudson Doyle can use this game to get back on track. I, other than that, I just hope that we win and no one gets injured. Touch wood. <laughs> Don't want anyone to get injured. That would be a big problem. And um, other than that, you just have to assume that Forrest will defend and sit deep and it will just be down to us to break them down. But I am confident that we can and will do so. You know, as much as we struggle against that sometimes, it is still a lower league opposition. And, um, you know, we have... Possibly some fresh players in there that will really want to impress. So I think we'll be able to break them down and get a, get a couple of goals, maybe three goals, because my score prediction is going to be a 3-1 win. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we somehow concede from a set piece, considering that it's also one of Forrest's strengths. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate all of you guys that have tuned in. Like I said in the beginning, please be sure to subscribe to Blues Fans TV. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the notification bell button so you don't miss any of the future videos. And also drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it, especially if you made it this far. It would be massively appreciated. Leave me all of your thoughts ahead of the game. Then in the comments section, below and um, yeah i'm gonna leave it here thank you guys for watching up the chills and i'll see you when i see you